tools that we acquired, but over which we, the human race, had the advantage, which we controlled. And that is not necessarily the case in the digital age. You may keep your secrets from your friends, from your parents, your children, your doctor, even your personal trainer. But it takes real effort to conceal your thoughts from Google. And if that is true today, in future, there may be nowhere to hide. Smart cities will pullulate with sensors, all joined together by the Internet of Things. But this technology could also be used to keep every citizen under round-the-clock surveillance. A future Alexa will pretend to take orders, but this Alexa will be watching you, clucking her tongue and stamping her foot. In future, voice connecti connectivity will be in every room and almost every object. Your, your mattress will monitor your nightmare and every one of them minutely transcribing your every habit in tiny electronic shorthand stored, not in their chips or in their innards, nowhere you can find it, but in some great cloud of data. There are today people who are still actually anti-science, a whole movement called the anti-vaxxers, who refuse to acknowledge the evidence that vaccinations have eradicated smallpox and who, by their prejudices, are actually endangering the very children they want to protect. And I totally reject this anti-scientific pessimism. I'm profoundly optimistic about the ability of new technology to serve as a liberator and to remake the world wondrously and benignly. Indeed, in countless respects, technology is already doing just that. Nanotechnology, I mentioned earlier, revolutionizing medicine by designing robot robots a fraction of the size of a red blood cell capable of swimming through our bodies, dispensing medicine and attacking malignant cells like some Star Wars armada.